The Apollo 11 moon landing on July 16, 1969, was one of the greatest achievements in the history of humankind. And engineering a video setup that could capture the event and beam it back to Earth so that half a billion people could watch it, that was pretty impressive too. But the version of the footage that the world saw on TV was muddied and degraded. Luckily, a pristine version of the raw footage was recorded on 14-inch magnetic tape reels and sent to NASA for safekeeping. One snag, NASA now has no idea where that tape is. The potential historical and edu educational value of the original tapes would be enormous. Late last year, an audio expert caused a big stir when he proved that Neil Armstrong actually said, that's one small step for a man, not one small step for man, during his famous walk on the moon. Surely the discovery of a better version of video so iconic that it served as the original network identification for MTV would cause an even greater uproar. But the 14-inch reels were an archaic format, almost completely forgotten, even at the space agency. In the data evaluation lab at Goddard Space Flight Center, there is an analog recorder, a seven-foot-high gray machine with big black knobs and huge reel-to-reel -reel spools. It looked like a prop from the 1960s show Lost in Space, but the hulking gizmo was the only known piece of equipment that could read the data from the ancient tapes. In October 2006, the lab is to be shut down as a cost-cutting measure. Floor tiles are missing, gutted computers are everywhere, and intestine-like coils of electrical cables burst from the ground. But thanks to the persistent pestering of the old Apollo vets, the device and the facility are to be spared f for the duration of the search. There is hope that one day the tapes will be found, and in the meantime, the recorder is fired up every couple of weeks just to make sure it still functions. If you don't allow it to work once in a while, one engineer says, it will die. The search continues, and yet the story may remind us that it isn't just NASA's tapes that may have gone missing, but what of our own digital memories? It wasn't that long ago that we took pictures, just to pick on pictures for a moment, on film. Now the convenience and the economics of digital media are heralding the end to film as we know it. Kodak, Nikon, Canon, and others were who we looked to to protect our memories, but who should we look to now? Kodak moments shared with friends and family, signs of our times. What will the shoeboxes of the new millennium look like? How will we read the tapes in 2100 AD? And who will keep them safe? This is not a story for the history books, but is something for us to ponder in our unfolding future. As we push into the digital age and urge our colleagues to do the same, should we be asking ourselves, how can we assure that the creative efforts of our time will last beyond our own generation?